defining de-identification. So the GDPR recital 26 says that the GDPR does not apply to anonymous data. And this has a definition, anonymous data, but what it comes down to is that no one is identifiable from the data. That's what makes it anonymous. It takes it outside the scope of the GDPR. Let's compare that with the test under Australian privacy law. And this says that uh, personal information, our version of personal data, is de-identified if the information is no longer about a person who is reasonably identifiable. So there's actually a difference there. The test for anonymous data under the GDPR, to take something outside the scope of GDPR, it needs to be no one identifiable, full stop. The Australian definition sets a lower standard as long as the person is not reasonably identifiable, now it's de-identified, it's outside the scope <coughs> of the Act. So if someone could be identified but it takes more than reasonable steps, the Australian law says, well, that's okay, we're still not going to apply privacy law to it. So my first point here is know which law you're applying. I've obviously not covered all the different laws. Uh, know which law you're applying and the exact definition and what it means. Um, there is obviously, uh, just like, you know, privacy versus data protection, personal data versus personal information, anonymous data, de-identified data, slightly different words. It's important to get your head around what they mean. So here's how we use them. I, break, uh, I draw a distinction, if you like, between the verb and the noun. So to de-identify the verb, to confidentialise, to anonymise means to do something to the data to try and break the link between the data and the person, to try and break that identifiability aspect. When we talk about de-identification or anonymisation or confidentialisation, we're talking about a set of processes or methodologies that you would use to try and achieve that. It's not a description of the end state. So when we talk about de-identified data, I and if I hear someone say de-identified data, I take that to mean data to which some kind of technique has been applied in an attempt to break that identifiability link, but it's not necessarily a statement that the leak, link has been completely broken. So the perfect end state is anonymous data, but de-identified data does not always mean anonymous data. It means data to which something has happened, whether or not you've achieved this kind of perfect end state of anonymous data may be open for question. It's extremely hard to achieve. So, how do you test for or even measure de-identification? There's a few different ways of doing this and I'm only going to cover the two um, main and competing tests. Um, K-anonymity. If someone says to you, you know, maybe the data Analysts or data scientists in a firm say, don't worry, our database is k-anonymous, so you don't need to worry about the privacy risks. Being k-anonymous does not mean the data is anonymous for the purposes of GDPR. K-anonymity is a framework for testing the level of re-identification risk in a data set and whether you've achieved um, your acceptable level of risk and how an organisation sets its level of risk can differ. So if a database, let, just imagine, when I'm saying database, just imagine an Excel spreadsheet full of student records or patient records, for example. If someone says this is K equals three, K anonymous where K equals three, what this means is that, let's assume the names have been taken out of the data set to start with and you're left with a whole bunch of other information. K equals three means that for any combination of the variables left in the data set, any way you slice and dice that information, there are at least three people who share the same characteristics and you cannot differentiate any further between the three people. If you say K equals 10, then that for any combination of variables, however you manipulate the data, there are at least 10 people in that data set who share the same characteristics and you cannot differentiate between those 10 people any further. So the higher you set the number of K, the lower the re-identification risk. However, to achieve a higher level of K, 
you may need to do a lot more to the data, strip more of it out, mess around with it more, so that the utility of that data starts to go down. So it will depend, obviously, what you're trying to achieve with that data and how important it is to keep lots of variables in there. Um, and so there's no universal definition of, about, about what number K needs to represent. So some organisations will say K equals three, that's our acceptable level of risk. Others will say um, the Australian Bureau of Statistics, for example, says K equals five, that's our level of acceptable risk when talking about data. We will not talk about data where there's fewer than five people uh, with the same set of characteristics in that data set. Um, Khaled El Amam, who's a Canadian expert in this area, says if you're talking about open data, I would not do anything less than K equals 11, for example. So it does very much depend on how you're going to use the data, what your appetite for risk is. The takeaway message is, just because something has been described as having K anonymity doesn't mean it is anonymous under GDPR. It just means that it's met whatever predefined level of risk, acceptable risk, has been set for that data set or that organisation. Then we've got this completely opposing definition of what de-identification means or what successful de-identification looks like. So differential privacy, this is where we get into some serious maths that is well beyond my level of understanding, but basically differential privacy is a mathematical proof that says you have achieved differential privacy if um, you could take one record out of your data set or add one new record into the data set and this will make so little difference to the overall statistical properties of the data set that you can still run all your analytics, run your statistical queries and get the same valid result regardless of one of whether one record has been added in or taken out. And thus you cannot tell whether or not Joe Bloggs is in that data set or not. So we've got these two competing definitions of what de-identification even means um, and which version you're following will start to impact on which technique you're going to apply to the data set. So this is a highly contested field of academic en endeavour, what de-identification even means. I take a completely agnostic view. I'm not saying one is better than <coughs> the other. I think as privacy professionals, you need to understand both and understand so that you can ask the questions of, say, your data analy analytics team, what do you define? How do you test for de-identification? Um, I think the limitations of both of these, but although particularly K-anonymity, is that they're testing for re-identification risk looking at the data set in isolation. So if we say K equals three, there's at least three people in that data set who have the same characteristics, you can't differentiate between them further. But if you then go and match that data set with another set of data, that may change that equation entirely. So increasingly regulators are saying, you need to consider both how the data itself has been treated, what you've done to it in terms of de-identification technique, but also the environment in which it's going to be used or disclosed. Is it open data release? Is it going to uh, sit in a secure lab with access only by three different approved researchers who have technical, legal, administrative controls over them? And regulators, and, and I'm talking here about both, say, the, um, the ICO in, here in the UK and the Australian Privacy Commissioner, also say you need to apply the motivated intruder test. Don't just ask, could the researcher with access to this data figure out who someone is, or can they figure out which data belongs to Joe Bloggs, but could the motivated intruder, at the organised criminal with lots of resources and motivation behind them, could they figure it out? 